This week we're going to learn how to plot the radar data that we retrieved from a thread server using Siphon last week. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to continue our radar data theme and learn how to make a basic plot of the radar data that we were able to retrieve from uh, a Thread's radar server using Siphon last week. So I've simplified the code that we ended with last week, uh, removed some of the prints and so on, to just get data from KFTG, and we're going to get the lowest reflectivity tilt. So if you haven't watched last week's MetPy Monday, be sure to check that out so you understand what's going on here. As usual, we're going to have to do some imports because we are going to need uh, several different tools to make this plot. So the first thing that we're going to need is a mapping library, which is going to be Cartopy. We're going to import matplotlib for our plotting. So import matplotlib pyplot as plt, and we're going to need numpy, and we're going to need the dataset object from CDM Remote in Siphon. The last thing we'll want to do right now is use the matplotlib inline magic so that our plots will show up in line in the notebook. So for just making a plot of one of the files, you remember we retrieved the last hour of data, let's just grab one of those. So data is our query catalog dot data sets. We'll just get the, the first one. We don't really care which time step we get right now. And then we'll use the remote access method to actually go grab the data. And let's look at a list of the variables that are available to us in the data. So we went and downloaded the data. We see we have elevation, azimuth, gait, latitude, longitude, altitude, time, raise time, the raw reflectivity, and the processed reflectivity values. So out of those, we know that the field that we're going to want to plot is the process reflectivity. So I'm going to go ahead and store that as a variable so we could change it later. So it is going to be base reflectivity dr. We're going to need the range and azimuth as well as the actual uh, reflectivity data. So we can go ahead and pull those out of this netcdf looking data structure. So the range data, and you notice range highlighted as green. That's a reserved word in Python. You can create a range of numbers, a list. Uh, so we have to call it something else, range data, data dot variables. That's going to be the gate variable. And we want all of that data for azimuth, data dot variables, azimuth, remember tab completion. We're going to make an empty slice. And then I'm, I could call this reflectivity data, but I want to make it more generic in case we wanted to change this to uh, velocities or uh, correlation coefficients or something later. So that is going to be data variables. And then we are going to use our field name variable and empty slice. The next thing we need to do is convert the range and azimuth data into actual XY positions. That's what matplotlib is going to expect when we use pcolormesh to actually plot this data up. So we can do a little bit of trig here and see that x is going to be the range times the sine of the azimuth, and y is going to be the range times the cosine of the azimuth. And we need to, of course, convert those from degrees to radians, since they're stored in degrees, but sine and cosine expect values in radians. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, the other thing that we're going to want to do is take our actual radar data, in this case the reflectivities, and we're going to want to mask anywhere that is NAN. So somewhere where there's missing data, we want to go ahead and make a NumPy masked array out of that so that it doesn't try to plot up in our P color mesh. So to do that, we'll say radar data, numpy.masteray.array. We're going to use our existing radar data array. And the mask is going to be anywhere that radar data is NAN. So the next thing we need to do is tell Cartopy or Matplotlib what the projection is that we're going to use. And we can get very, very close to what the actual projection of the radar data are if we just use a central latitude and central longitude on a lambert conic conformal plot. And those uh, radar latitude and radar longitudes are stored as metadata on the data set. So we're going to say our projection variable proj cartify.crs, according to reference system, is going to be Lambert conformal. Our central longitude is data dot radar longitude. Again, remember tab completion makes looking through this metadata very easy. Central latitude is data dot radar latitude. Okay, so now let's actually make a plot. We'll make a figure object. We'll create an axis on that. Don't forget to specify the projection here. And then we're going to use the pcolor mesh command to actually plot the data. So we're going to give it the X and Y positions, our data, and we're going to make sure that our data plots on top of any map elements by specifying that we want the zero with Z order, this top layer here. If we run that cell, you see we've got some radar data. And this is using the Virtus color map, the default color map, which is not really what we're used to looking at. And we don't have any geographic reference information here. Next week, we'll add a color map to this, add some annotations, such as the time that the data are valid at. And we'll go ahead and put a MetPy logo on there, some state borders, and learn how to crop down the geographic area that we're viewing. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can find us on Twitter. We're at MetPy and at Unidata. And also go over and like the Unidata Facebook page to stay up to date with everything that's happening here at Unidata. Thank you for joining me on this week's MetPy Monday.